Life on the Autism Spectrum. I'm Keith Halperin. And I'm Will Burning. Mm -hmm. And today, since as we're filming, it's uh, the beginning of summer, we're having a summer-themed uh, program. It is uh, Autism and Sailing, and our guests are from the Bay Area Association of Disabled Sailors. But before we begin, what's with your shirt? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> this week's shirt is, is, is an, yet another USF basketball shirt. This represent this symbolizes the symbolizes the cheer, the fandom of the basketball team. They recently played in and, and won and won the championship. Excellent, excellent. You have a lot of the USF shirts, don't you? Well, I go to a lot of games and, and they hand out free shirts at most of them. Word to the wise. Well, thank you. So <laughs> We'll now get in uh, to our guests. As I say, they are from the Barrier Association of Disabled Sailors. And uh, Will, would you like to take it from there? Gladly. First question. Tell us about the Bay Area D Association of Disabled Sta Sailors. What is it? Uh, hi, my name is Ed Gallagher from BADS, the Bay Area Association of Disabled Sailors. Uh, we began almost 30 years ago over at Lake Merritt, and then we moved over to South or to San Francisco there by the Giants baseball stadium. And we have around 30 boats. Uh, we have different programs, these small dinghies and medium-sized race boats. And, and I run the keelboat program, in which we have nine keelboats from 20 to 36 feet. And uh, the whole concept behind BADS is using sailing as a means of instilling self-confidence, communication skills, respect for the environment, and what happens when people who have been injured or had come down with diseases are usually left out of the culture. And we found that BADS using sailing uh, to bring people into where they can transfer the skills that they've learned from BADS over to other aspects of their lives. So that self-confidence and being able to communicate with others and strategic thinking on how to plan out a, a sales course, uh, all transfer to other aspects of their lives and it just really improves their relationships with other people. Uh, <clears throat> Sammy and John came out, got what, 10 years ago? About 10 years ago. Yeah, and uh, it's gotten to, uh, Sammy was pretty quiet when he first came out most of our students, sailors, when they first come out, they're kind of worried about what the heck they're getting involved in being disabled and being out in the middle of the bay. And uh, over the last 10 years, Sammy comes down and uh, with John and I and a couple of other crew. And he's been around the program so long that he's familiar with the people, he's familiar with the boats, and uh, it's just a real relaxing time uh, that they come out with us and it's, just, it's a, just a great experience. It just opens up their whole lives. And I've noticed Sammy over the years is becoming more self-confident and, and uh, he appears to be really enjoying it. Uh, and now we'll be talking to uh, Linda Stevens, who is a parent in her group, and we'd like to find out a little bit how uh, you got involved. Um, we got involved because our son Sam, who is now 24 years old and on the spectrum, is most successful with outdoor mm -hmm. physical activities. And we came to BADS. I had a lot of concerns about him being out on the bay and safety. And um, the whole time that we've been involved with BADS, Sam has done great. Um, the motion of the boat and the fresh air, mm -hmm. etc., is very calming. Um, he really enjoys being around the other people on the boat. Um, so this is Samuel Bowers, and next to him is John Bowers, my husband. They are the sailors. Mm -hmm. I do not go because I have motion sickness, but I bake muffins and I bring muffins every time we come. So that's my contribution. Excellent. How did uh, your family get involved originally? How did you learn about it? John, do you want to address I, that? <clears throat> I went to a resource fair 
and uh, it was at a place called Bananas mm -hmm. in Berkeley, which is a, a service center for people with disabilities. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the longtime uh, originators of BADS, a guy named Dan Leininger, had a booth there, right? Yeah. Dan was one of the original people that started BADS. Is that correct, Ed? No, he, he's been with us for 20 years. Okay, well, that's a long... But he wasn't one of the founders. So. Okay, all right. But anyway, he was the one who was mm -hmm. in charge of this booth, and he was there to tell people about BADS and invite them to participate in, in BADS activities. And so I learned a lot from talking to Dan, and, and uh, then I think it was about two weeks later, we went down to Pier 40 here in San Francisco where BADS is located. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, we started out initially for the first year or two uh, sailing in their dinghy boats. Mm -hmm. they, BADS has two programs, a dinghy program and a keelboat program. Excuse me, what is a keelboat? A keelboat is a, a, a sailboat, and Ed can maybe explain it better mm -hmm. than I can, but it has a keel, which is a rudder, which is a, a mm -hmm. part of the boat that, that projects down into the water and keeps the boat upright when when the boat is in fairly heavy mm -hmm. wind conditions and so it's called a keel boat because it has a, a large keel mm -hmm. on it um so uh bads has two programs a, 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 a dinghy program which is where people get their original their mm -hmm. initial exposure to sailing and once they feel comfortable in the dinghies then they can move up to the keel boats so excellent so you've been involved in uh, about 10 years, is that correct? Yes. yes. Excellent, excellent. What, notice, what have you noticed as changes uh, in uh, Sam over the years? I noticed you had mentioned that uh, you'd had some. Could you elaborate a little bit on that? Well, let me, I don't want to get too clinical, but um, uh, people on the spectrum like Sam have, have uh, neurological systems that are different from ours. And one of the things that, that they need to, to have to make them feel comfortable and oriented in the space that they happen to be in is they need sensory stimulation. Mm -hmm. And so one of the behavioral characteristics that you will see in people on the spectrum is what is called self-stimulatory behavior. Mm -hmm. Um, and that can sometimes take the form of rocking back and forth. It can sometimes take the form of hand flapping. But these are characteristic yep. physical um, uh, behaviors that you will see people on the spectrum engaging in. And they do that because it, makes, it gives them a level of comfort that yeah. they need to have, just like all of us. All of us do similar things. I happen to be tapping my foot right now. That's giving me a feeling of orientation in the space that I'm in because this is a new mm -hmm. situation. I'm not too familiar with what, where I am right now. And so I'm giving myself a little bit of comfort by tapping my foot. Well, that's a very subtle way of sensory stimulation. People on the spectrum use more, more open uh, larger movements mm -hmm. to give themselves that feeling of comfort that we all use in our lives, but in a much more subtle way. So what, what does sailing do for mm -hmm. somebody like Sam on the spectrum? If you can imagine all of the sensory inputs that, that you get when you're out on a sailboat, mm -hmm. you feel the wind in your face, you feel the boat rocking, you feel the spray of the salt water, um, uh, in many cases. All of these are very sensory um, experiences. And, and uh, for, for a guy like Sam, it's very calming for him because all of the sensory stimulation that he Thank would otherwise be giving, providing for himself is being provided to him externally on the sailboat. And so sailing is, I think it's, a, an, ex it's an extremely therapeutic activity for Sam mm -hmm. to be able to engage in. And we are eternally grateful to BADS for providing that kind of opportunity for him. Thank you.
and it shows you everything about the club and how to sign up, how to register. And so if you find out about BADS through the internet, you, you can call us up, there's a sail mail number, or you can register to come sailing online. Uh, we go out every weekend, and usually it's best to, to uh, do a <coughs> reservation about a week or two in advance because in the summertime it fills up pretty good. We're down at Pier 40, which is along in San Francisco's Embarcadero, right adjacent to the Giants baseball stadium. There's a little restaurant called the Java House that we all meet at every weekend. And on Saturdays is the dinghy program, which are these small sailboats between 8 feet and 12 feet that are set up that, so that anybody, whether they're a paraplegic or quadriplegic, whether they have autism or any other physical or cognitive disability, uh, you pair up with another person on those boats and sail around McCovey Cove, adjacent to the stadium, or you go out in the bay. Uh, because these boats are small, we keep them pretty much close to Pier 40, and uh, that's pretty much a Saturday program. On Sundays at 12 o'clock, we meet at the Java House, and uh, there's all kinds of great transportation to take you there. And uh, we meet up at Java House, go over to B Dock, where we have five of our keel boats, which run between 20 and 36 feet. And uh, we, now we can electronically set up everything, uh, naming the skipper, the crew, where we're going, how long we'll go out, what's our ETA coming back, <coughs> any maintenance needs on the sailboat. All this is done on the Salesforce hub. And so everything from registering when you first join BADS. It's free initially. If you find that you really like it, then you can go out and uh, every weekend all the sailing you can do for 50 bucks a year. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. John and Linda, uh, particularly John, you had mentioned some of the beneficial effects that uh, Sam gets from uh, <coughs> sailing. What other things seems to be uh, helping, or I guess the words would be what does Sam most enjoy about it? Well, he, as Linda mentioned, uh, Sam engages in a wide variety of, mm -hmm. of outdoor recreational activities, not only sailing. Mm -hmm. Sailing is a very important part of his life, but we also go, we, he's, he's, a, he's a very accomplished bicycle rider. Mm -hmm. We go skiing up in the mountains. We mm. go ice skating at the Oakland Ice Skating Rink. Uh, we've taken a number of bicycle trips uh, around the Bay Area. Uh, mostly off-road, um, but um, people on the spectrum are, uh, one, one of the hallmarks of being on the spectrum is having uneven or uh, 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 un, un, uneven uh, skill levels and mm -hmm. competencies. Yes. And Sam's competency uh, focus happens to be in these physical activities. And so all of these things are things that he enjoys doing. He feels, I think, a sense of accomplishment when he mm -hmm. does them. And so they are the things that we have been trying to give him the opportunity to engage in. Excellent. Before you in, uh, engaged in BADS, did you have a sense that uh, this would be something that Sam might like based on his physical activity? Or is this just sort of you exploring a new uh, venue and seeing if this might be good? It, it, it was a combination. I, we, we had a feeling that he would enjoy this activity, um, but we were, we were never certain about that. Mm -hmm. um, in, initially, he, he uh, showed some hesitancy in mm -hmm. getting in the boat, but he gradually came to feel familiar about being on the boat and the, and the feel of the boat in the water. Um, one of the other activities that, that he engages in is, is sea kayaking. Oh. And so he's familiar with the, the feeling of being on the water and being in a, a watercraft. So moving to sailing was not that big of a, a transition for him. But it took a couple of years uh, for him to feel really comfortable out on the boat. 
And now it's fair to say that he is um, uh, just very, very, very familiar with the boat and the feel of the boat. He gets right on the boat without any hesitation. And uh, he has a big smile on his face when, when we're out there on the bay. Excellent. This sounds like something that a number of our viewers, assuming that they are located uh, near a body of water, would be interested in. Thank right. you. Can you tell us about some of the social aspects? Yes. Um, prior to sailing, um, we meet at Pier 40, as Ed has said, near the Java House. Um, and people introduce themselves and chat a little bit. And then people do, while they're out on the boat, talk among themselves and, and share various things of interest. And then there is a place called the South Beach Yacht Club, which is um, a private club. BADS members are allowed to go there. Um, and after the sale, uh, many of the people on the boats do go to the Yacht Club and sit down at the tables and, and have some drinks, buy the skipper a drink, eat some chips and popcorn, and socialize. And it's really a very, very nice aspect to being out on the boat. Excellent. Ed, uh, earlier we talked about that the uh, program begins with uh, uh, BADS members starting out on dinghies and then going over to keel boats. Could you elaborate a little bit on what the, the typical training program is like and how long it is and so on? Yeah, the, uh, <clears throat> the, the dinghy program is distinct from the keel boat program. Uh, people can graduate from the dinghies to the keel boat if they haven't had experience. But if they have <clears throat> had experience sailing before, uh, which a lot of people have, uh, then we bring them right out to the keel boats if that's the size of the boat that they want to sail. But BADS is primarily a teaching institution mm. using uh, sailing as a means to instill different whether confidence and communication skills, that kind of sort of thing. Uh, <clears throat> we do meet at the Java House. We all go down to the dock and uh, we have four sailboats uh, between 20 and 36 feet. And we divide up the crews into uh, different sailing experiences, who they've sailed with before, who they, what kind of boat they're familiar with, they'll be comfortable in. And uh, we all get our life jackets on and sign waivers, mm -hmm. and all that kind of legal stuff. And uh, head out to the bay. And uh, either we can head out towards the Golden Gate Bridge, or we can go around Angel Island, or we can go around uh, Treasure Island. Uh, we're out there about four or five hours, come back in around 4.30, 5 o'clock, and uh, put the boat away. <clears throat> but when we're out there, uh, being there's all different levels of experience, uh, we start out right out with the bases. What's that pointy end of the boat called? The bow. Mm -hmm. The stern is the back end of the boat. You know, the mast is that tall pole sticking out of the top. Uh, we start out real basically. And uh, we just finished a, uh, the keel boat training program to become a skipper. And this year we had 34 people signed up for that. And out of that, we got 12 new skippers. And those guys <coughs> will be assigned a boat. Uh, they'll work along with the first mate uh -huh. and a boatswain who does the maintenance on the boats. And uh, it's just, it's just a continuing learning experience. Mm -hmm. I've been sailing for 60 years. Good grief. And I'm still learning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, every time you go out, you learn something new. So that's what BADS is all about. Well, thank you all. This has been a, a very enlivening and exciting program. And we thank you. Um, I guess the last thing is, are there any special events that BADS is going to be having this uh, summer that maybe our, our viewers would be interested in learning about? Me? Yes, Ed. Uh, yeah, we have a number of social activities <laughs> over the year. Uh, we have a picnic every year in the fall out at Angel Island. We all sail the boats over there and, and have a big barbecue and spend the day on Angel Island, which is a great little place. Mm -hmm. uh, we have all kinds of races all year long, all different levels, all different boats. 
Uh, we have the Christmas parade where it's a lighted boat parade where everybody goes from the South Beach with a long line of sailboats and all kinds of Christmas tree lights on. It goes up to Pier 39 and back. Uh, of course, we have the opening day barbecue with all kinds of oysters <laughs> on the half shell and Rockefeller, all kinds mm. of ways. Uh, we have uh, uh, Thanksgiving, <coughs> we, we throw Christmas. Uh, we used to have the pirate party at, at Halloween. I don't know if they're going to have that this year. It used to be pretty wild. Uh, there was constant activities going on all the time. So the best thing to do <coughs> is on the BADS website, if you look up the uh, uh, events calendar, it lists everything that's going on. There's really interesting, fun stuff going on. Cause we we uh, communicate with all the other yacht clubs around the Bay Area. Sometimes we do coastal cruising, mm. uh, where <coughs> we have one of our bigger, biggest boats, uh, especially designed so you can pick up a paraplegic quadriplegic right off the dock with a boom to the horizontal mm -hmm. pole, lift them up right into the cockpit. And then you sail for four or five hours, like if you're going up to Drake's Bay. And uh, you take a couple boats up, you get out in Drake's Bay, which is nice and quiet. There's no other boats around, other, other than sea lions. You raft up the boats together and uh, anchor out in the bay. And uh, we have a lift that is allowed to lift the, <coughs> the pairs of quads from the cockpit right down inside the boat. So that they're able to, it just brings them right down into a big berth of the width of the boat, and <coughs> they can sleep overnight. Excellent. And for pairs and quads, it's almost, uh, it's like going to Tahoe for a weekend. And to be able to sleep on a boat is one of the most relaxing things. And then you, you're lifted back up out of the, the boat in the, mo out of the cabin in the morning and you have a nice cup of coffee and watch all the wildlife come alive and and uh, it's like a big vacation. So we have all kinds of experiences for all kinds of people's abilities. Well thank you. We really appreciate that. This sounds like uh, uh, we've got a grand series of events planned. So. <coughs> Once again, I want to thank all of you, and I don't know if it's appropriate for a landlubber like me to say, but good sailing. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And now we'll hear from our book correspondent, Jennifer Brooks. Thank you, Keith. Today, I will be primarily talking about Your Life is Not a Label by Jerry Newport. But first, in honor of our friend Paul Nussbaum, who has started out on his adventure hiking the Pacific Crest Trail, I'd like to encourage everyone to read the book Wild by Cheryl Strayed, which was made into a movie featuring Reese Witherspoon. This is about a woman's adventure hiking on the Pacific Crest Trail, the same trail that Paul has just ventured out on. And if you're looking to read similar stories, you could try Zero Days, this is about a family that hikes the entire length of the Pacific Crest Trail, which Cheryl Strayed did not, although she did hike most of it. And then there is California Coastal Trails, a horseback adventure from Mexico to Oregon in 1911, more than 100 years ago. Our state was a very different place back then. In many ways, it was a better place. So, Jerry Newport has written an advice book for other people with different neurological systems about how to cope with having a different neurological system and being so out of sync with the rest of the world and often not understanding why. He covers everything from surviving school to how to impress your boss to personal relationships to serious subjects and he includes a chapter on travel which includes both a lot of practical advice for how to have a good travel experience and then he describes some of his own travel he took a trip to hawaii to swim with dolphins there he is on the cover 
holding a dolphin. And he says his trip to Hawaii was his first time off the continent. It was far more fun than he expected. Since then, he has been to London in Great Britain and Toronto in Canada and taken over 70 trips in all. The travel has helped him learn a lot more about how the world runs in general and has increased his knowledge of an expanded variety of approaches to autism. It has given him confidence in everyday life and probably made him a more interesting person. Certainly, he doesn't feel so left out of the world. However, despite the great luck he had on his first trip, there have been some bumps on the road. Yes, there will always be bumps on the road. And the rest of the chapter is about how to prepare to handle some of those unexpected bumps. And I absolutely love the title of his last chapter, chapter 23. It's a point that is often forgotten, but should be remembered by people both on and off the autism spectrum. It is called, A Good Life is Not an Accident. Thank you. Sounds like a very interesting and inspiring book. It is, very much so. Sounds inspiring to me. Thank you very much, Jennifer. And now we have a cultural event uh, posted by our uh, missed, but will soon to return, uh, cultural correspondent, uh, Stacey Kennedy. On Saturday, June 30th, Strings of Summer Azure is a free concert at Stanford University starting at 1.30 p.m. Fun, friendly, and engaging. It's tailored to children and adults in the autism spectrum. And Azure means bright bloom color like a cloudless sky or a small butterfly that is typically blue or purplish with color differences between the sexes. Again, that's Saturday, June 30th. And then uh, for our members uh, and viewers, happy Pride, everyone. Hope you were safe and had fun marching in the parade or just watching the parade, which will be later this weekend. Thank you. That's our program for this week, and uh, I'm Keith Halpern. I'm Will Burnick. I'm Linda Stevens uh, with John and Sam Bowers. And uh, I'm Jennifer Brooks. And Ed Gallagher from Babs. Mm -hmm. And we're live on the autism spectrum, and once again, happy Pride Week. Take care.